Hey everybody, it's Paul from Screw Night and Scribe. Today, this video is sort of a little different than my regular review of software video. Today, I'm trying to bury the hatchet with Final Draft. If you've seen in some of my other videos, I haven't always been the kindest to Final Draft, and I sort of want to bury the hatchet with them because I'd like to actually get them on the show here and sort of ask them, hey, how does this process work? Tell me a little bit more about your development. And let me, and I could also bring some of the issues that we've been experiencing forward to them. Um, because if you know my one of my videos that blew up this last year was me taking a look at Final Draft 13 and seeing being how as disappointed as I was with the features. So to help that, so that way that I have five different things that Final Draft can do if they haven't already entered the the development cycle yet, which I'm, I might be fairly confident that they haven't yet because looking at Final Draft 13, they obviously didn't take a long time to think of through all those different features. Okay. I sorry, I didn't mean that, <laughs> but you know what I mean. So, Final Draft. So if you know somebody from Final Draft, or if you can just um, send them this video or hashtag them in this video, have them look at this, because I got five things that they can do in the next iteration in Final Draft 14 that will blow the socks off their customer and bring people back to them and actually make them a giant in the space again, because their market share is getting smaller by the day. So let's go through them. I have five of them for you, and they're in no particular order. And I'm also going to give examples so that Final Draft can look at these and go, okay, so this is how they do this. So I'm not just going to randomly spout stuff off and not give you a proof on how to make it work well. So the first one, our number five, is going to be just have a PC version that's not so buggy. And if you want to look at a good software comparison to them, you can look at their chief rival or one of their chief rivals, as in Fade In. Uh, Fade In has a really well working PC as well as Mac version of their software. Somehow, this guy who runs Fade In, I think he's just a one man show. I don't think he's got a lot of other programmers, can make a version that works on PC and also works on Mac. Um, and so I was one of the things I was really disappointed with Final Draft 13. We're still seeing the glitchiness uh, since the beginning of time for Final Draft, right? It, it hasn't gotten any better. And you'd think that I was thinking, well, maybe the one things they did under the hood that they couldn't really brag about was having a PC version that would work great. Well, we still don't have that. Hey, and if you ever get in a problem with your PC version of Final Draft and you're like, hey, I just lost a bunch of work, I'll point, I'll point here and there will be a video up here that will help you sometimes get back your work for you. Uh, there's a hidden, I shouldn't say there's a hidden, there's a, there's a way that you, there's a way that you can bring back your work and also set you up for, for success as well too in case, especially if you're running a PC, so this way that you always have some backed up work. So take a look at that video. And number four, affordability and innovation both together at the same time. One of the great softwares that I've been looking at recently has been Studio Vidity. They actually, if you look at the, they're charging a really, really low price. If you are just trying to get into screenwriting and if you're an independent filmmaker and you need uh, an app, especially an app that runs on um, Android, go to Studio Vidity. It's better than Studio Binder and it has a lot more different features and it costs a lot less than Final Draft or Studio, or Studio Binder. It's just amazing stuff. So stuff like this can happen. You can have an affordable product and give us a lot of features at the same time and make everybody happy. And you can still make money too. I've actually talked to the people at Studio Video and told them to raise their prices a little bit because they are doing so much good work that they need to get paid more for some of this stuff. So Final Draft, can we go $100, maybe 75, maybe 50? I know from this last time around with Final Draft 13, you drastically dropped the price of how much we normally would have to pay for this new version of the software. You actually, I saw so many sales because you knew people weren't gonna buy this because of how little features you add and how little functionality you really did add. And so I can see that you can, you can absorb that from a price cost. And so if you can do that normally in this situation, why, so if you can do it in this particular situation, why can't you do this normally? So think about that. I think everybody was gonna like more features, cost a little less, the final draft. So don't think that I'm trying for you not to make any money at all. That's not the point of this particular part. It's simply to ask the question, can you give more for less? And if the answer is no, okay, that's fine. But I wonder when I see stuff like Studio Vidity and I see So Create and I see uh, Script Studio and they're giving us a product that gives us more and it costs the same or if not less, then I sort of ask myself, What's the, what's the reason why I should buy Final Draft? So number three, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about features now that you could add that I think would help Final Draft. And this next one is from Script Studio, it's character creation. 
Now you could probably add this into the beat board. Now you might be wondering, well, Paul, how do we add this to the beat board? Well, I think what you could do is create a character beat. And so the thing that I like about Script Studio is that when you create a character in Script Studio, it asks you a long list of questions. So you get to really know the character. You really have to think about the character, process the character, get to understand who the character is. And I think this would be a great addition to Final Draft. So what I would ask you to do is, so when you have a character beat, so let's say um, you, you have your regular beats that you can pull on your beat board. And I just did a video about that. So if you want to watch that, you can do is create a character beat. And with the character beat, you can click on that and then you can do a lot of these in-depth questions, you know, like not just besides what they're wearing and stuff like that, including a picture, but you know, what the relationship to other people is, have they had past traumas? I mean, you can build out this. There's a lot of different ways you can look at this. There's a bunch of different questions that you can ask about a character that help redefine that character to help bring that character into better focus, into better clarity. And the easy thing about that is you make it a character beat. I know you can cascade stuff because I've seen stuff cascaded in your beats as it is right now. So there's a way for you to do that. So what if you would just take that information you can, so when you open a character beat, it sort of brings everything out. And when you need to, when you need to move it around on the beat board, you just hit the cascade button. It puts it all into that one beat and you can move it around the board as much as you want to. I think that'd be great for your beat board. Let me know what you guys think. What else do they need to add to the beat board to make it more usable, to make it more user friendly, especially around characters? What's, what, what's another way that we could have Final Draft figure out a better way for us to understand our characters better? Number two, feedback. Now I noticed when writer's duet was starting to become a big thing that Final Draft sort of started getting its act together in terms of collaboration um, and sort of being able to talk and to a, a different writer and to work together on a project. Now there's something new in the space that I think is, is becoming a real game changer in getting feedback from your audience or feedback from different individuals. So Create has come out with a great new innovation around that. You can send somebody a page of your script. You just send them a, a in it, so you just send it to them in an email. They can look at that. You can get feedback and you actually can watch in real time as they go through your script. You can see where they linger in your script. You can see, you know, if you say, hey, can you read these five pages and say, oh yeah, yeah, I did. You can actually pull up the statistics and say and look and see how long they stayed on each page maybe they never got to page five and they're lying to you and you're like hey can you really look at page five because i can see in the data that you didn't spend hardly any time in that or not at all so i think this is another big game changer that final draft can do um you know how can we how can it work with the feedback system like i said take a look at so create if you want a good feedback system do you want to be able to send your script out to people and get feedback and make it painless Take a look at so Create. They did a great job. The last thing I want to talk about is Shh AI. Now, before you turn the video off and go, Paul, what heresy are you trying to do right now? Let me explain a little bit about how I see AI in terms of Final Draft. Now, I don't see it in terms of the same way as we look at Squibbler. Squibbler has sort of gone off the deep end in terms of AI use. You can basically have Squib the AI write the whole thing in Squibbler. And that's not what I'm sort of advocating for this. What I do like is StoryWork. The way that StoryWorks has an AI coach that helps you write sort of the outline and helps you sort of figure out your ideas. I think that's a game changer in terms of that. I think a lot of times as we're trying to put together a story, it's easy to sort of get lost. We don't know where to go next. And I like that type of AI where we can ask it a question, say, hey, here's my story. What's an idea or set of ideas that I can use to make it better? Or if I get stuck with writer's block, I know there's a certain piece of a story that I've been working on and I had been hitting at it for two to three days and I, I just couldn't think of anything. So I said, hey, this is the situation. What are seven different ways that I could resolve the situation? And I ended up making an amalgamation of two of them. And so it was really helpful to see that and to have that brainstorming session with the AI. And I think Final Draft can do something like this. Now to make it good for AI, people who want to work with AI and people who don't, I think they should have a button where you simply click and say, hey, I want AI to help me or hey, no, I do not want AI to help me. Um, and it could be as easy as that. Um, so that way, if you never want to use AI in your screenwriting, you don't have to. But if you want to use one to help you sort of figure stuff out, you can do that as well too. And you could have it come up as a separate panel or something along those lines uh, if you want that as well. So here's the caveat with AI, and I know this from talking to other screenwriting developers and stuff like that, is that it's gonna cost money. So as we talked a, a little before about making this more affordable, if we're gonna use AI, then Final Draft is gonna to have to think of a different model because the, the, because the amount of money it takes to run AI in your computer program does vary depending on the user and stuff like that. 
And so how does Final Draft cover the amount of, because I'm assuming they're not going to make their own AI. Um, they're probably going to plug it into ChatGPT or something like that, some other type of AI. And so they have to pay a fee in order to use that AI processing time. Um, and so the unfortunate part of this, they do use AI within Final Draft. They're going to have to change the way that is priced. And I'm really surprised they haven't gone to a subscription model yet because I know they could probably make a lot more money doing that. Um, and maybe they are with Final Draft 14. It's going to be a more subscription based. I don't know the plans for Final Draft. So it'd be interesting if anybody know who works at Final Draft knows, are you working on a subscription model? Are you just planning to keep this always as a model where we just pay one price for the year and we can use it? So what do you guys think? What do you think of those five things I talked about? What would you like to add? If we could talk to, to Final Draft and get them to do some neat, cool things to their program, what do you like? Well, let me know in the comment section below. Until the next video, live well and write well.